Hello and welcome to Hardway Learning. Today we're going to install a wide band on the Miata and that requires us to jack up this front left corner because the L2 sensor is tucked back in there and I believe the easiest access is through this front left uh, wheel well. We're going to be running the AM wide band and we're going to run our wire to the O2 sensor itself through the speedometer cable grommet and that will give us access to the controller inside the cabin and then we'll be able to send our analog signal to the mega squirt that we just installed. Uh, if you haven't seen the mega squirt install, uh, I showed you how to run your map. But today we're doing the wide band, so we are going to take this wheel off. So we heard some clunking on the front of the car. We're getting passed by the sheriff. <laughs> So this may be cheating a little bit because I already had the uh, O2 off from the transmission install. So this popped off really easy. But I've got my, my O2 sensor adapter there and then a universal on the end of that. And just popped it down. Cracked her loose. Now we'll unplug it from the top. So once you've got your original O2 sensor out, you put the new wide band in. It was actually easier to put the adapter on there and then put a 12 inch or eight inch extension with the four inch and just tighten it from here. And you should be home free on the bottom side of the car. I'll run that lead upwards, but it's not gonna plug into the same socket that it was in before. So now that we got our O2 sensor tightened into the manifold, we are going to pop the speedometer cable shroud off and pull this guy out a little bit. We're going to use that grommet to run our wideband sensor line from. So since the O2 side is actually a lot bigger, we're going to run the small connector from the engine bay into well, you don't want to send all of your slack into the car. You can run this O2 sensor to the moon and back. And we'll plug our O2 sensor in like so. There's a square side and a round side. Now the rest of our work should be in the car. So what I did was take my radio out and take the uh, aftermarket little cubby here. Remove that. I will eventually make a little plate here so that this is more secure than just wedged. But we are going to wire in this wide band right here. So we're gonna run this guy here. And we're also gonna, so that's to the actual O2 sensor in the engine bay. And then we are gonna wire power to the controller and the analog to the mega squirt. So in order to do that, the analog five volt signal comes across the white and the brown. And I'm gonna be running the power to the buzzer 12 volt switched. So I'm gonna need the analog signal to break out and I'm gonna send it along the transmission tunnel over to the mega squirt. So I'm gonna pull those analog wires out here so that I can break out right by the radio. So that's the white here, nine and 10, pin nine and 10. There's also this white, that's actually a white and a black and that is not what we want. So you wanna hold the wire straight so that there's a little less resistance in pulling this, this lead through. So now I'm gonna send power leads over here. So we wanna do pin one and two, which is red and red wire in the black. That'll go to our 12 volt switched and ground. And then I'm gonna wire my analog signals to the mega squirt this way. There's a little cubby hole where this harness is. It's really important that you wire this analog harness with the power and ground directly to the mega squirt because if the reference or ground is not uh, the same between the mega squirt and the controller, you're going to have a voltage offset and that is going to mess up what the mega squirt sees as your AFRs and cause 
it to make corrections, make the wrong corrections basically. So we've got our analog signal running to the mega squirt and we will go wire in our power. Here's where I have disconnected the buzzer. Awful noise. What we want is 12 volt switched, which is the, the black and yellow. So we're gonna cut that a few inches off the connector and splice into that and ground, which is black. So we got power and ground routed from the controller to the buzzer. So this power's on and it's on 12 volt switch. Boots up, starts heating the O2 sensor. And now we need to take the analog signal from the controller to the mega squirt. So in order to do that, we're gonna go to pin 21 of the mega squirt plug and play two is oxygen sensor input. So we will take pin 21 and solder that to the positive signal of the O2 controller. And we're gonna take the negative output, which is your ground to signal ground of the mega squirt, which is pin 22. The final piece of the Megasquirt puzzle is deleting your MAF and installing an intake air temperature sensor. The Megasquirt operates off of a MAP sensor, which is measuring the pressure in the intake manifold, but in order to get the full picture of how much air is flowing into the engine, it needs temperature. Um, I basically kept my original MAP as the connection point because I wanted to run the car naturally aspirated before we boost it. And so I used a die grinder to basically hollow out the MAP so that it's no longer restricting our airflow into the engine. So picked up a few horse ponies from there. Um, you basically can use the original MAF wiring harness for the intake air temperature sensor. It is uh, pins three and four, polarity doesn't matter. But once you've got your MAP line run, which we showed in a previous video, your Y-band installed and connected to the mega squirt, and this connected, you are ready to load your base tune and set up all of these so that the mega squirt is interpreting the inputs correctly. So we'll show you that in the next video and happy boosting. Thank you.